Namaskar. Very good morning and heartily welcome to all. Today, the 21st September, is a very special day when Padma Shri Dr. Hari Narayan was born in year 1922. A doyen of geosciences, he played a stellar, stellar role in nurturing the CSR and GRI right from its nascent stage and transforming it into one of the globally renowned Institute of Excellence in the field of geosciences. To commemorate his birth century year, we are organizing the Dr. Hari Narayan's birth centenary year lecture today. We all heartily welcome Professor Padmashri H.K. Guptaji and other dignitaries present online and offline. As a customary, I request Dr. P.T. Srivastavji to present a bouquet to Dr. Harshke Guptaji. Also, I request Ms. Samina to present a bouquet to our director, Dr. V.M. Tiwariji. Thank you, Dr. Vitti Srivastavji. Thank you, Samina. And now I request Dr. Tiwari to steer the proceedings of this event. Thank you. Thank you. Fine. Respected Professor Harsh Gupta ji, today's the birth centenary lecturer, Dr. Harinarayan Memorial birth centenary lecturer, Professor Vaijay uh, Bhaskar Rao, Dr. Shakil Ahmad, many senior colleagues of CSAR NGRI and several colleagues across the country joined through online media. Namaskar and very good morning to all of you. As mentioned, we are assembled today to celebrate the centenary birthday of a worthy son of India, Dr. Hari Narayan. Dr. Narayan, as known, was a brilliant scientist, a great visionary, science administrator, and above all, a passionate patriot who used to give due respect to his peers and cared his junior colleagues with love and affection. Dr. Narayan had proved that it is not the paucity of the funds that marks the progress of the nation, but rather the lack of willpower to forge ahead that creates the roadblocks. I would like to mention here many of the things which we do not realize in life and which majority of the people, visionary and the institution creators might have faced during their long careers. And particularly Dr. Narayan, who held the different higher positions, like director of the institute, CSAR NGRI, long, as long as of 19 years. Creating and building an institution is a really a very tough task. And we never realize the kind of the situations these visionary might have encountered. It's a kind of balancing between industry, or I would say like an industrialist and a socialist. The in industrialists are the 
kind of a narrative where we reward the ingenuity, innovation, and also try to maximize the growth of the individual areas where we are leading for not only the prosperity of the individual, but also providing the best product. And for science administrator, it's the best science to the scientists and the consumers in that sense are the stakeholders who are get benefited from the science. On the other side, the socialist who have to think about the equality for everyone and also sounding like a very compassionate and also looking after the interest of each individuals working in the respective organization where they lead the organization. And balancing these two for decades for an individual is not easy task. I must tell you that it is not, it cannot be done by a simple individual. It requires certainly the big blessings from God and a great supports from the family members and all others who have been the part of the journey of the such visionary like Dr. Hari Narayan. Today, we are very uh, fortunate that few of those people who might have supported at home to Dr. Narayan have also joined his daughter and his son and probably other members today when we celebrate the centenary lecture uh, in the memory of Dr. Narayan. We all know, and most of the people must have been told about that Dr. Narayan was graduated from Allahabad University and Sydney, University of Sydney. And in fact, he was the first PhD awarded in geophysics in Australia. Those, probably the younger colleagues, may not be knowing the kind of the challenges Dr. Narayan faced and con converted that challenge into the opportunity. During very short period, he had expanded the institute from about 150 square meter to 150 acres of sprawling campus much before he laid down his office in 1983. He not only expanded physically the National Geophysical Research Institute, but also expanded the geophysical research in India to a global standard. Just in five years, he turned the Indian geophysical research, a major geophysical research country in the world, solving problem in the mineral and groundwater exploration, building geophysical instruments, setting up of several observatories like seismological observatories, geomagnetic observatory, flying airborne geophysical instruments, repairing gravity map of India, repairing uh, heat flow, starting the heat flow measurements, paleomagnetic measurements, and so on. You can see the history of the progress of geophysical education and research in country at 1965 to 
1980 was a tremendous. You all are aware that he served several institutions in the country, right from as a pretending geophysicist in Oil and Natural Gas Commission, and then the director of the Institute of Petroleum Exploration at ONGC. He has not only seen the progress in geophysics, but also tried to see that all the allied subjects of geophysics progresses as geophysics progresses in the country. So as a surveyor journal of India, he was the 41st, I understand the surveyor journal of India who had got prepared several maps, including the road map of India and, and, and so on. I had a very little opportunity to interact with him as a young researcher, and that was the day when he was serving in the advisory council of Director General of Hydrocarbon. And I remember that day when he was chairing a meeting with the then director, Dr. Harsh Gupta, and today the speaker, and Dr. Narayanan also happened to be uh, in the committee of DGH. And he talked of the 4D gravimetry for monitoring of the uh, natural resources, particularly the hydrocarbon. That was the vision, that was the uh, kind of his updation of the science in the late 90s as well. I will not take a long time talking about all what Dr. Narayan did for the country and for the geophysics, which Professor Gupta would narrate in much better way. But I must remind that these memorial lectures are the kind of the opportunities when we learn from the lives of the great visionaries who have really not only made us proud in the, the field where they have served, but also it, it had been uh, inspiring stories for all the generations who have then with those visionaries and also for the future generation. I would also little bit digress from his uh, contributions towards the geophysics, but of his interest large enough for the progress of the country. And probably you may be knowing that he headed a committee which had charted the roadmap for science and technology's contribution for the rural development. And I happened to read that uh, very recently because day before yesterday, when uh, we were in Jammu and Kashmir discussing how science and technology can help in the progress and growth of particularly the farmers of uh, the Jammu and Kashmir and probably in other parts of the country. In addition, he had also been uh, very much interested in general in the foreign affairs at very young age when he was a PhD student at uh, University of Sydney. He wrote um, a long letter to the uh, editor of the Age newspaper uh, in March 1953, questioning the claims of the uh, letter from the press attache of the Pakistan High Commission in Australia. So he, right from his early days, he stood for the country, he stood for the subject, which had been in the forefront during his entire year of serving the nation, serving the institute. With this, I salute 
Dr. Hari Narayan on his 100th birthday and thank Professor Harsh Guptaji for agreeing our request to deliver uh, the centenary lecture in the memory of Dr. Hari Narayan. Thank you very much and I request Professor Gupta to deliver the lecture and uh, the, the uh, introduction of the uh, Dr. Gupta, I think uh, is not required for the kind of the audience we have today, but just for uh, narrating in, for the knowledge of the younger colleagues are the people, those who are not from the geoscience background that we have today with us another builder of the institutes in geosciences who have served to the highest level in the country as member of NDMA, equivalent to the Minister of Science, equivalent to the Minister of State, and also served as a secretary Department of Ocean Development, and quite long time he steered the National Geophysical Research Institute as director, vice chancellor of the uh, Cochin University, director of the SES Trivendram, and well known seismologist globally who have created a space in seismology on the triggered earthquake and led several major programs in seismology right from the creation of the global map of the stress as well as now he is very much uh, interested continuing his interest in the trigger seismicity. With this, uh, we welcome our today's speaker, Professor Harsh Guptaji, to deliver the centenary lecture in the memory of Dr. Hari Narayan. Professor Harsh Guptaji. Thank you, Professor Gupta. Thank you, Professor A very good morning to all of you. Dr. Tiwari, senior colleagues here, uh, Dr. Vaisya <coughs> Bhaskarao, Shakil Ahmed, uh, Sri Nagesh, uh, and uh, Devendra, and I see Prakash and Nanguli. And I believe that Pankaj and Mitali, as well as uh, Manjuri and Raju, children of Dr. Nguyen and their spouses, are listening. Uh, first of all, I must say that I'm very grateful to Dr. Tibari for giving me this opportunity to talk today. And what I'm going to talk, I'm not going to talk uh, much about the science component of Dr. Narayan. I'm going to talk a little bit more about him as a human being, which uh, is probably not known to everyone that how he got inspirations, what he did, and how he managed to be a loved person wherever he was. So that's why I've uh, titled my talk, A Mentor with a Difference. Uh, he was uh, a very happy, a very happy couple, married to Mrs. Uh, Saroj Narayan, and uh, for 67 years, 47 years, they were together. So that was a wonderful thing. Uh, my introduction started with him in 1961, when I was a third year student at uh, Indian School of Mines in Geophysics. And he was director of the Institute of Petroleum, which became now uh, Pet uh, IDPK. Keshav Dev Mali Institute of Petroleum Exploration. And he was visiting uh, Indian School of Mines. And we, the students, 
called him for a cup of tea and he very graciously agreed and he said that he will meet us alone with uh, no director of the institute or anyone so he could be free with us so the user complains that uh, there are no jobs and what we should do etc etc and all of us at that time had inkling of leaving country because uh, it was not very difficult to get admission in foreign universities and we raised this question to him that uh, what is your opinion about it and he said that uh, please sir uh, do go abroad for getting the knowledge but do come back to your own country so that you can serve then of course uh, as uh, dr tiwari has mentioned that uh, he was uh, director of the ministry of petroleum at ongc and that reminds me of a story that uh, was told to me by my professor professor jagdeep singh who was a very good friend of dr harinarayan and the story goes he said harsh do you know how harinarayan became director of ngra i was a fourth year student at that time i said no what happened he said there was some difference of opinion between the indian institute of petroleum the csr setup in dehradun and keshav dev at that time institute of petroleum expression of ongc and to sort out those differences dr husain zahi who was then the director general of csr all both the directors director of uh, indian institute of petroleum as well as dr hanina and they had a discussion and dr han had some very solid points on which she will not give and this uh, dr who who sense he realized and after some time he said i believe our meeting is over so dr han came back but there dr who sense he spotted a person he was looking for a new director for national geophysical institute because we had a extremely brilliant scientist doctor doctor <coughs> uh, who was the first director of ngri and he had already retired from the geological survey of india and that is what brought him to ngri of course we all know that uh, he had uh, a charisma he could show people what is being done and uh, extremely wonderful person He joined NGRI in January of 19 uh, in March of 1964. Sometimes in middle of set uh, of 1964, there was an adverse event. They were looking for a person who could set up a seismological observatory at NGRI. And imagine he had joined NGRI just three or four months ago, and he had a dream of setting up of a station like. worldwide standard seismograph network these were 64 wwssn networks set up globally by usgs and when ngra approached them that you please give us a station at ngra hyderabad he was told we have committed five stations for india they have already gone we don't have a six station for you to set up in india at hyderabad so then he took it up on to him that okay We started to perform our own, and the post was advertised. I appeared for that interview, and uh, I was fortunate to be selected. Incidentally, that interview took place on 21st of September, 1964, exactly 57 years ago. I did not know that day that it is his birthday, and I did not know that after 57 years I will be talking on his birthday. so i was selected and uh, i was i had come from shillong at shillong the wwss station had been just set up and there another peer dr dr saha bishwapada saha had given me the responsibility of helping the us team and i had run quite a bit about it so i came and joined and jri on 21st of november that time we were in g type quarters these were the quarters which were built by then regional research laboratory dr sudhu was the director at that time 
and they did not have people to occupy the squatters. So there were three rows of G type squatters, which is uh, roughly, you know, each uh, flat there would be around 1000 square feet or 800 square feet, two rooms, toilet, etc., etc. And he moved from San University to this place. And when I joined, that time we were called Senior Scientific Officer Grade. There was no scientist. This came after the Sattar Committee. So I joined the Senior Science Council of Gate 2, and I reported to him. I was the eighth scientist to join, and uh, I went and met him, and he said that Dr. Mendroa is taking up the seismology. You please go and meet him. So a room had been allotted to me, and it so happened that Dr. Mendroa room was just next to that room. And uh, there was a small kitchen where Husani used to sit, who was a PA. So I was ushered into Dr. Mlendu Roy's room. And Dr. Mlendu Roy had prepared a list of intervention to be bought for this laboratory in consultation with Dr. A.N. Tandon, the then director of seismology in IMD. Dr. Tandon also happened to be his teacher at Allahabad University. And they were both very good friends. And so I met Dr. Mlendu Roy, and I was just 22 years of age. Dr. Mlendura was a very sophisticated, great person. He produced a list of the equipment that he had uh, culled, that he had prepared in consultation with Dr. Turner. And I was, of course, just in the year of age. So I went through that and I started saying, this is missing, that is what should be. He listened to me for five minutes and said, Mr. Gupto, I prepared this list, spending 15 days with Dr. Turner. I don't want it to be rejected by a greenhorn in five minutes time. Go and come back to me after one minute. Now this has happened within one my, within one hour of my journey in the area. So I had no strength to go back to my room because I was shattered. So I went and sat in the library. And by the evening, I had the list prepared that what the list should be. But the order was to come after one week. So I waited for one week. After one week, I took an appointment with him, with Mr. Husani. He assured me to Dr. Mendo as well. And Amlurinda said, come with me. He took me to Dr. Harini. He said, here's a list that I prepared. And here's a list with this young man's paper. What should I do? Now here comes the uh, greatness of Dr. Harini. And he says, Dr. Roy, I shall do exactly what you want me to do. And Dr. Roy was, you must give total credit to him that he meant business. He said, we shall send this list to Leonard Murphy. Leonard Murphy at that time was in charge of USGS setup of WWSN stations in USA. And sending a list, uh, no emails, no nothing, no faxes. So the list was sent by airmail. And this was too much for me. And I knew that nothing will come for less than 15 days. So I just took, uh, went to her doctor Ryan, took uh, one week's leave and went to Moradabad, my hometown. Because I had just come from Shillong and had not gone home. Anyway, I came back and I kept on waiting. So it must be 19 or 20 days after that letter was sent and there was a knock on my door. And now I say, I'm going to be standing there again. So I thought that that's the end of first group time in India. He says, come with me. He took me to Dr. Harina. He said, I've got a response from Leonard Murphy. And he says that the list by this young man is correct, is more appropriate. Please don't let him work under me. He should have independent charge. And that's where within 20 days of my journey in there, I was made project leader at the age of 22 and given the responsibility of setting up the seismic registration of the country. And again, his greatness, Dr. Ryan said that, sir, he addresses himself. I totally take what you're telling, but please keep on guiding him. I said, I've come on meeting you. And, what and then Dr. Amlindu Roy, total interest, whatever has been done. So that was uh, the beginning of my career at NGNRA. And uh, I was like, he had a person who 
acted big. And uh, we started uh, looking at the things. And this is the program that he had chalked out within six months of his joining NDRI. This is signed on 1st of December, 1964. And then he says, NGRI is the first laboratory of its kind in the country. The Survey of India has been a pioneering organization carrying out gravity surveys. The Indian Meteorology Department takes care of various asthma stations. The Geological Survey of India has been carrying out geophysical exploration. ONGC has been carrying out geophysical exploration. Now you see close coordination of research activities with these organizations and with the universities and technology institutions which are teaching geophysics will be the essential to ensure proper development of efforts resources on geophysical studies in India. And then he goes further and says that there'll be seven, seven to eight different branches. And he starts with seismology, tectonophysics, gravity, astrospacy, geomagnetism, geophysical expression, theoretical geophysics, et cetera, et cetera. So by this time, uh, I have placed order for all the equipment that we required for the observatory. There was some shortage of money. We could not place order for the console, but I had all the know-how to make a console for ourselves. And I got an invitation to go to the uh, International Institute of Seismology and Physics of Earthquake Technology. No. Uh, International Institute of Seismology and Earthquake Engineering, uh, Tokyo. It was a UNESCO fellowship. And Dr. Nan was very happy. He said, uh, yes, Hush, you must go. By the time the equipment comes back, you will be back here. And uh, it's a very good learning place for you. So I went to Tokyo. I came back. And, uh, you know, uh, the peers who were dearest to him were the people like Dr. Dean Wadia. Of course, who says that he was the uh, secretary to Government of India and uh, General. And uh, he imagined an institute and uh, a 3D model was built. And the biggest thing that he did was to keep this building well inside the campus, not on the road. Because in most institutions, you'll find that the moment you enter, within 50 yards, 100 yards is the main building. And he had somehow that foresight that is better to be away from the main road. So that's say you will be away from the noise and any expansion, et cetera, et cetera. So that was being done. And then uh, this is Indira Gandhi on 3rd of January came to lay the foundation stone of this, this uh, institution. And uh, somewhere in 1999, he sent me a letter with a tape. This is an audio tape of NGRA founded stone laying ceremony by Srimati Indira Gandhi on 3rd January 67. You may like to get it uh, converted into audio or whatever. But uh, that tape by that time was 22, very, very old. And we tried very hard, but we couldn't retrieve anything. But you see that he had, uh, you know, to store that thing for such a long time. We had got all the equipment and uh, the building was built and many of such features were. So I was all set up. Uh, yeah, but I must tell you another story before. When I came back from Japan, all the equipment had arrived and there was a provision of paying USGS who will send two experts to set up this laboratory. The charges was $20,000 at that time. And due to the Pakistan India war, all the money from all the government departments had been sucked away. So he said that there is uh, no money available. And uh, I kept on debating. And one day I was courageous enough. I said that, sir, why don't you get me to set it up without any help from USA? You know what was his answer? Why didn't you ask it before? So I began setting up the laboratory. And in another uh, 
three, four months time by about October, November, the laboratory of 1967, the laboratory was ready to be set up. But by that time, he had already contacted K. Rao. And uh, K. Rao had agreed and given a date for the inauguration. He said that since such a senior man has given the date, we'll wait for it. Another very interesting thing happened that uh, Vikram Sarabhai was visiting Hyderabad. And uh, all the CSR laboratories, everyone wanted to spend some time with them. And he gave half an hour's time to NGRI. And we were still uh, in the GTAC quarters. So he came and spent some time with uh, Dr. Ayn. And then Dr. Ayn brought him to the campus. And he brought him to the classmates of the team where I was working on underground on this equipment. And Sarave must have spent about eight to 10 minutes with me trying to find out what I'm doing, et cetera, et cetera. And that was forgotten. Then what happened that on 11th December, the coin earthquake occurred. I felt it at my home. I rushed to the institute and I went to see Dr. Narayan and I said that kindly permit me to start the observatory so that we can record the aftershocks. He gave the permission. Then I also requested him that can I go for a visit to Poena? Because uh, I'm very keen to have first hand knowledge of what has happened there. And uh, he said, uh, Can you wait till tomorrow? I said, Sir, what are you saying? Sure. So he said that a car will come to pick you up tomorrow morning. I was staying in Marjpalli at that time. Next day, around seven o'clock, a car comes to where I was staying. And there I find Dr. Harinayan sitting in that car with Rashid, the driver. He said, I also wanted to know what an earthquake looks like. And can I join you? So then, of course, uh, he took total part in the field visits. Here is the track we examined on the road, the rotation of the pillar. Then uh, all this work, uh, you know, all the damage, all the damage. And uh, he was not in a rush. Even after being a director, he was not saying how, how long we can stay because we were supposed to go back together. So I was there for almost three to four days. And all those days, he was very happily coming me and telling his own way of looking at things because he also had a lot of field experience. Of course, not sassonary, but jokes, but he knew things what to be done. The first paper in nature from the institute was submitted on 22nd of February, 1968, and uh, was published. It's got ending in. Left. Put left. No, I don't like to condemn so much noise in my time. I cannot. Thank you very much for this lovely depiction. I'm really happy to have this in the back. Thank you very much. Finally, uh, the observatory was inaugurated by K. Ramanathan, Dr. K. L. Rao. Incidentally, Dr. K. L. Ramanathan also happens to be the first uh, president of IUGG from India. And uh, just read this annual report of 1967-68. The distant star may look more glittering, but the Earth, our own star, is all full of beauty and riches. 
waiting to be discovered. Today, man is more obsessed by mysteries of our outer space than the composition of earth he works on, the ocean he sails, and the mountains he climbs. Thus observed the Prime Minister Indira Gandhi while laying the foundation stone of National Geophysical Institute building, Hyderabad on 3rd January 1967. The impact of her words was felt strongly when in the month of December, the same year, Koina Nagar in Maharashtra was rocked by an earthquake which though of moderate magnitude came over to only human lives and rendered thousands homeless. Yet, paradoxically, very little attention is paid to the earth on which we live, from which we drive our all resources, since the appearance of the man on the planet, our knowledge of Earth has grown, but still, studies on the Earth have been remained considerably limited and our knowledge is extremely meager. So, ending up the annual report so strongly was really remarkable. This is the happy lot. Dr. Hena is seated in the center and uh, you can see myself uh, along with uh, Indra Mohan, MBD Sitaram, and uh, all other people of the observatory. Sitaram is here, and I want you to know Mr. Malaya. Mr. Malaya was a person who knew inside out of everything, and why I'm mentioning his name, that due to some disturbances, there was a curfew, and I could not come to the observatory to change the seismograms, so nor could any one of these people. But Malaya was staying somewhere here, and uh, Dr. Nair went to the observatory, and Malaya told him what to do, how to change things. And he guided him totally. When he was about to leave, Malaya stopped him. Why? Because he asked him to sign the paper where everyone who operated the observatory on the day had to sign. So, and he was very happy. And he told me that story that you are a wonderful man. When I changed the record, I want to leave. He would not let me go without signing the paper. Another great thing of Harinan was that uh, he was totally with you. And at no meeting with him, you ever felt that you are with the director or the superior, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He will mingle, he will uh, talk to you. And uh, the institute was also not very huge. I was like, can you believe me that uh, he had taken me to meet Dr. Hussain Zahir? Pushwa Bhargava was a brain, a wonderful person, and we used to talk to him a lot about it. So uh, by this time, the observatory has been set up. There was no promotional avenues available like what are available now. Here now, scientist B to C, C to, of course, we now start at scientist C. And Dr. Ryan was very keen that I should be promoted. And the only way was that either you create a post which will be advertised and things like that. The other channel was at that time that the director writes a letter of support to the director journal. And the director journal, if he finds merit in that, he calls the director and they discuss it. And if they find it okay, that things happen. That was also the time when Dr. Nain was not seeing eye to eye with Dr. Atmana who was a then director general. But he had no hesitation in sending my nomination. And within a month's time, he was called and they had a discussion and Haridan came back as a very happy man. So again, the objectivity of these individuals, because there was a difference of opinions on some principles between Haridan and Atma Ram. But when the question came of assessing a young man, his capability, Atmaram was totally happy. So these are the things which uh, make a person totally different. In 1971, the seismology has been set up and everything. And I get another offer to go to again to Tokyo, this time on a senior university fellowship at the same institute where instead of being taught, I'll be teaching and uh, doing research. And I went to him because I was very hesitant. I had come back just three years ago, and I actually said, that, why do you want to again? But he said, no, your previous visit to Japan was very positive. 
you help us in certain areas of the day, so you must go. So we went to Japan again. The things were going on very fine in Japan. And uh, I was progressing my, my work. And there I met uh, uh, Professor Mark Lensky, who was a professor from the University of Texas in Dallas. And he somehow liked my work very much. And he said, Harsh, why don't you come to Texas for four months? And you write a proposal to the National Science Foundation. And in case it gets accepted, uh, you can come for a longer time. I said, I'll go to India and come. He said, no, no, that will be too expensive. And uh, you know, time, and he wanted it to happen immediately. I said, I cannot just do it because I'm in deportation to, to, to Japan. He said, uh, it's your choice. So with a lot of courage, I called uh, NGRI. And uh, I was told by Mr. Murthy that Dr. Narayan is uh, in USA. So I traced him, he was in Milno Park. And this is a time difference almost 12 hours time difference. So finally, I caught him uh, when he had left Menlo Park and had just reached the hotel. And I explained total thing to him very apologetically. So what should I do? Go ahead. He didn't say that I have to take permission from President or let me think. Immediately, go ahead. So our total program changed in 72 from Japan, I went to USA and Dr. then Manju, my wife, came back to India. And uh, I was there for four months. Uh, I wrote a proposal. I came back to, after writing the proposal, I came back to India and things continued here. Dr. Ryan, as you know, were honored uh, with the uh, Padma Shri in 1974. Uh, the proposal was finally accepted and uh, they offered me a very decent uh, fellowship in those days. And again, I went to Dr. Harinaran and said that, sir, this has happened. He said, yes, please go ahead. You should go and uh, do well. So we went to USA in 1974 and uh, I got totally involved with the University of Texas at Dallas and uh, we were doing very well green card and all kind of things happened. That was a time that uh, we almost thought that uh, we will have to send a resignation to NGRI because things were so well going. Everything was wonderful. In 1976, towards the end of 76, there was a, uh, there was a conference uh, in uh, North Carolina there was one W.W. W. Rogers with whom Dr. McPhee used to work. And he had organized a seminar on peninsular geology. And from India, Dr. McPhee had come, Dr. Hinan had come, Dr. P.P. Radarshan had come. And I was invited, so I went there. Uh, I have been always fond of uh, very flashy and good cars, but sometimes you can't afford them. So in, in USA, what I used to do, I couldn't afford a $100,000 car. But whenever I went on such visits, you know, you can rent a car. So I will rent the best possible car. The ordinary car will cost you $20 a day. Those cars will cost you $100, $200 a day, but I enjoyed that. So I had rented a wonderful car at the airport. I came there and I met Dr. Nayan, B.P. Krishna. He looked at the car, he said, is it yours? And he was saying, it's not mine. I just hired it from the airport. So we were there for Three days every evening, I'll take him around him and be with other Krishna go around in that car. Second day, I asked him that why do have you come to uh, USA? Why don't you come to Dallas? He did not come. Second time, I asked him, sir, I requested you come to Dallas. Why don't you come? He again said nothing. Then the third day, I said, sir, you must come. Please give me your ticket so that I can get an additional jacket put in it for your travel from to Dallas and that. He gave me his ticket. There was already a folder there. I was a slip was there from Chapel to Dallas. So he had intentions to come to Dallas, but he would not. I mean, he must be trying to see that how, uh, how sincere or how committed I am to take him to uh, Dallas. So anyway, 
he came to the Dallas and my wife Manju came to pick me up from the airport. So he had uh, never seen Manju driving before. And he was very impressed that Manju came in a beautiful car, picked us up from the airport, took us home. And I requested him to stay with us. We were two daughters with us. All was very happy. I took him to the university. He spent some time. He said, oh, Manju drives very well. I'll go and do some shopping with her. You, I don't want to waste your time. I dropped him back. The third day when I was, uh, we were bringing him to the airport, he told Manju, Tumari baas samajh mein aagai yana. Manju said, yes, samajh mein aagai. And he had convinced Manju, my wife, that he must return to India. That was his mission at that time. And we followed the school, he came back. Now, this is a, a true depiction of his idea of earth sciences, where he shows that how important earth is. And we have got a huge mural, which was done during his uh, tenure as a director, which reminds us of all the time. Uh, what I want to impress that uh, I must uh, go back a little bit. After the Kohana earthquake, there was a meeting in Bach, which was uh, chaired by Vikram Sarabhai to look into the causes of uh, causes of coin earthquake. And of course, Harinan was invited. Uh, Dr. S. Balakrishna was there. Dr. Ian Tennan had come. Like that, top people were there. And he just asked me that, uh, Harsh, you also come with me. So I went. So there was a room, uh, maybe about twice the size of this room. About uh, 150 people there. We come to by sitting on the chair and then uh, director Mark and Hari Ryan, every person sitting in the front, and I'm seventh or eighth row. So they are discussing pros and cons of uh, this earthquake. Suddenly, Vikram Sarabhai says, Harsh, do you have an opinion to express? I was amazed because I had met him only for 10 minutes when he had come to the Sajma Observatory. The reason I'm telling you this incident is that after that, Harinayana was so happy that he could spot you. So the happiness that he drove in my recognition was probably more than the happiness he ever drew in his own recognition. This also reflects. This is annual report of CSR 1977 The last paragraph, the book Dams and Earthquakes, authored by Harshke Gupta and Bikar Sudhi, has been well received in scientific circles as revealed by reviews in leading journals of geophysics, the review professor Carl Kissinger, director of Corporate Institute of Research and Environmental Sciences, Boulder, Colorado, comments, the authors have prepared a timely, comprehensive review of the best documented cases of reservoir induced earthquakes and of the current state of understanding of the phenomena. A substantial part of the book is drawn from their own research. In 1979, uh, he was selected to be the vice chancellor of uh, BSU. And here he is with the uh, uh, chancellor of Banaras University and uh, honorable vice president of India. Uh, he retired and then uh, we thought of bringing our issue in his honor. And tectonophysics readily added to this Lithosphere Structure, Dynamics, and Evolution, a volume in honor of Harin Narayan. Dr. Nekvi was here. I was at uh, Trivandrum at the time in Balakrishnan. And uh, you look at the authors. Watt, Banerjee, Ken, Condi, Band, Rogers, Cook, Beloso, Jason Butler. So all possible people from all over the world contributed for this volume. This is a 400-page volume. And uh, the foreword for this was written by C.S. Pichumatu, who was then the president of the Geological Society of India. And what he wrote in was week. Those who have the privilege of being in close contact with him greatly admire his quiet, yet captivating charm and winsome manner. His quality of being a patient, sensitive, and receptive listener has endeared him to all his colleagues and fellow workers. He's a firm believer in bringing out the best from any individual, a quality which makes even an ordinary person feel important. His sparkling brilliance, keen perception, 
and positive outlook have earned him the recognition of being one of the most successful science managers in India and an able architect of a great institution for new scientific research. Pichamuthu is a very knowledgeable person, of course, he's no more, but for him to make this observation is really remarkable. Then Kiva Vazov wrote Geophysics Research in Australia, and I've called out this paragraph. The first PhD in geophysics was awarded to Dr. Hiran, former director of the National Geophysical Institute by the University of Sydney in 1954. Then, uh, 2001, Dr. Narayan is honored with the National Medal of the Excellence by Sri L.K. Advani. 2007 was a very interesting year because uh, we were able to have Planet Earth as a title of the Indian Science Congress Association. 2007 was also the year of Planet Earth. So, we had this meeting, wonderful meeting in uh, Annamalai. Sri Nagesh is one of the main architects of that conference. He and uh, who were with you? Dr. Chadda, Ajay Mamlik, Kalachan. Four persons were the persons who totally structured that thing. And uh, we had uh, the International Year of Planet Art, uh, starting in uh, India. And uh, President Abdul Kalam was very happy to release balloons to, to, to welcome this to India. And the uh, best thing that happened that uh, they were uh, President's gold medal. And uh, we got some outstanding people to be honored that day. You can see, if you see from, from here, you can see Kakotkar, this is Subarao. This is A.V. Rama Rao. This is Dr. Hari Narayan. And this is uh, Dr. Lal, Dr. Devind Lal. The people who are not in this picture include, uh, include uh, persons like uh, Govind Saru and many other known or uh, close to our, our sciences. So he is uh, receiving that award from Prime Minister and uh, he was very happy about it. On 17th uh, January 2011, we had the uh, we had the uh, Golden Jubilee celebrations of uh, NGRI, and Vijay Bhaskar is sitting here, who had organized it, and he was a very happy man that day. He came, he spent almost three hours in the institute. He talked. We requested him that uh, you can talk from where you are sitting. He said no. By that time, uh, he he had uh, macular degeneration. So, you see, in the macular degeneration, your retina you can't see from, but you see from the sides. So it was difficult, but he was a very really happy man, and uh, he's honored by dedicating uh, our library in his name. Now, this is something those who visited Harinayan. In his office, there was a big board. Nothing else written on there, just think. And he meant it. And the same thing was at his home, a big board. He just said, think. And he meant it. And uh, he was a wonderful listener. He never said, Hush, I don't have time. It never happened to me. And I kept on uh, gossiping, telling him all kind of things, this, that, and uh, so only something. Is it enough for that day? So that was there for me to leave. But that's how he was. Uh, this is honored by petroleum industry. Uh, after there, Dr. Tiwari has already mentioned all the honors. Another very important thing uh, that Dr. Nand brought was a family closeness. As a bachelor, I don't remember ever having visited his home. And after Dr. I will get busy. But Mrs. Nine will feed me only on Wednesday. I could never leave that place. It was dinner time, lunch time, whatever time, when she would not feed. When I got married, uh, my wife was very welcomed by them. And uh, Manjri is probably looking at this picture. 
she's on the team right and uh, we have uh, myself mrs narayan and this is a uh, this is a shamla this is yagar who was the next door neighbor and of course my wife is there uh this is a part from the obituary we lost him on uh, on on 27th of january this is just about 10 days after that function that uh, dr vijay bhaskar had organized and uh, mr nan told me that he was very happy and he said that nothing more is required and uh, so i just said dr nan had the rare quality of assessing a scientific situation in a totally and taking decision considering the scientific as well as humanitarian aspects of the problem i quote him organizations and management of scientific research is an art in addition to being science one has to take into account not only the scientific capability and qualities of leadership but also human aspirations jealousies and attitudes towards both colleagues and their scientific interests creative persons be in art or science have to be nurtured with care and their sensitivities have to be respected so i have seen many people with lots of whims and fancies which hanin ran tolerated and uh, because he knew that there is some other good part of this journey the period covered from 1950 to 83 the year dr hanin i look at the that it, it was indeed a testimony to dr nas stewardship to find ngri placed fourth in the order of merit of the national physical laboratory national cabinet laboratory and central drug research institute dr nan brought respectability to the sciences in india and then what i can say it is really remarkable as how an individual brought respectability to geophysics in india and how he nurtured young talent he jumped what for the fortification of the dreams so it was uh, we have many dreamers but uh, harinan had the knack of having a way of uh, fortifying that dream and for that he did not leave any stone unturned he will bring gupta sharma from gsi he will bring amlendu roy from iit or own gc he brought dr kela from own gc another very interesting story in the 70s there was a question of bringing deep sasking sound into india and it was originally was being given to india meteorological department because they had the largest uh, seismological group dr tandon was still there he said no we cannot do these new things there is one harsh gupta in ngri why don't you ask harinan harinan was all ready to have it but he discussed it with me as sir i am quite busy with uh, observational seismology and personally i have no field experience i cannot say that i know anything about deep seismic sounding and he accepted that and he said okay now we'll have another person dr kela comes so what i'm trying to say that a man who listened to you and respected what you said is very difficult to find individuals like him i wish his family manjri raju vitali ankaj and their children all the best uh, before i end this talk i must thank three persons who helped me in preparation one is kirti shivastav rupmani and kusmita thank you very much was a great narration sir and we profoundly thank you for enlightening all of us how the long journey of ngri through the journey of life journey of dr narayan we have a uh, few other very uh, distinguished colleagues senior colleagues with us 
who had the admiration and also been part of the journey the NGRI may have gone through. And one amongst them is Professor R.N. Singh, the former director of CSAR in NIRI and the scientist at CSAR NGRI. Presently, he is in IIT Gandhinagar and joined us uh, through online. So may I request uh, Professor Singh for uh, a few words of his remarks, working with Dr. Harinarayan and the progress made at NGRI during his time. Professor Singh, it's over to you. Uh, thank Uh, thank you, Dr. Tewari, for uh, asking me to uh, uh, speak uh, about uh, Professor Harinarayan, uh, uh, the person who is mostly responsible for me <clears throat> being where I am now. Uh, Dr. Ryan, um, he was our MSc uh, final exam examiner and uh, Kabir, Tarkeshwar, myself and many of us uh, had heard about him so we were also very uh, uh, in awe of him and um, uh, let me uh, mention a story about uh, Kabir not me. Uh, Dr. Ryan asked a question to Kabir uh, and Kabir said, sir, I don't know. Then he asked next question. And Kabir said, sir, I don't know. And his teacher, Professor Chakravarti, was fuming that Kabir was not able to answer the second question. So Dr. Anand asked the third question. And it so happens, Kabir said, sir, also I don't know this. And then Casey Chakravarti asked Kabir, you must answer this next question. And when Dr. Ryan asked the question, again, he didn't answer. But it didn't make any difference to the result of uh, Kabir in his examination. And uh, uh, he asked uh, Kabir, Tarkeshwar, me uh, to come to NGRI, where he is going to join a little later. We, I recall we, we came to NGRI, I along with um, uh, Upadhyayaji on 8th September 1964. And uh, he had asked uh, that I should join Dr. Negi's group. Uh, Dr. Rawal was already there. Um, I didn't have fellowship while well, everybody else had fellowship. Uh, so when uh, I got, a, I don't recall how I met director in his office, but maybe his PA would have asked me. So when I met him, he, can one imagine a director of an institute telling a young fellow, uh, knowing the condition that, uh, uh, um, Rishi, if you need any money because fellowship has not come, you take it from me. That was the director. He was looking at uh, how I will live in Hyderabad without money. He knew the conditions of all the people. Uh, so that was him. Second incident, I recall uh, that um, uh, my youngest son had some problem and I was highly worried about it and uh, I don't know from where he came to know. I think uh, everybody's problem was also his problem. So he called me in the office and he says that I have taken an appointment with NIMS uh, uh, Dr. Rao, I think. He was an orthopedic expert and tomorrow you should go to him. 
Now, so his kindness and his total care of the people was remarkable. I am quoting only two, there can be many instances. I want to touch about his science part. Uh, very few, he never talked about it, uh, but uh, he was a very complete scientist. He had MSc uh, in physics and PhD uh, about gravity. So uh, he has the total perspective about Earth in his mind. So any topic which you talk to him, he was interested. It was not foreign to him. Uh, in contrast to many of his senior colleagues who were, uh, um, were receptive when you talk their own subjects with them. Um, uh, imagine uh, the development of paleomagnetism, imagine the development of heat flow, imagine the development of theoretical physics, imagine the development of deep sea sounding, uh, besides seismology, which Dr. Gupta has narrated. So any topic which you talk, I recall when he was a uh, vice chancellor at Banaras in the university, uh, he uh, came to NGRI and uh, called me to meet him. When I met him, he said that uh, there's a volume on Himalayan evolution is being uh, thought of by Dr. Gupta and Dr. Delani, I think. Uh, I want you to contribute a paper. Uh, then I told him, sir, the rheology of the earth uh, is just coming up. Uh, and his expertise in MSc was X-rays. And how the X-ray has allowed uh, knowledge about rheology of the material. So he said, that's a very good idea. Write a paper on that. And uh, in that paper, uh, uh, he said, what are you going to cover? I said that one can find out what is the thickness of thermal lithosphere. One can find out what is the thickness of uh, elastic lithosphere, uh, which can be used later on for sedimentary basin. He, was, he says, go ahead and do it. And uh, that work is solely because of his uh, 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 interaction and uh, there was another thing, I think uh, he, he realized that I was very fond of theory. Well, I was fond of a different aspect of theory. So he was asked to write a, a chapter on hydrology uh, by, I think, IUGZ. So he suggested, can I help him to write? So a, a small book, uh, maybe about uh, 70, 50, 60 pages, uh, um, uh, he uh, was prepared and uh, uh, developed uh, uh, in his direction. And uh, I didn't realize that um, uh, that work, he will, uh, uh, he will, uh, that will come out in IGG under his authorship. I was his joint author. So Dr. Ryan's science was very wide ranging. He was not narrow uh, in any special direction. And I know there is question, time, uh, question of time. I was given two, three minutes to speak, but I can't uh, mention that um, uh, when he, when I joined Niri, he, uh, I invited him to come and meet the staff uh, because if he knows what a legendary director of a CSR lab has been, Vice Chancellor of Banarath University. And he spent a lot of time with scientists and uh, people when I think he has come with his wife. So both as a person, as a very, very kind person, looking whatever needs you may have and how can he, uh, and as a scientist, he was legendary. I, uh, the last thing I want to say that I wouldn't have been scientist, uh, but for him, uh, I wouldn't have been here, but for him. So I pay my personal great tribute to him on this occasion. And uh, thank you, Dr. Tewari, for 
asking me to speak on this occasion. Thank you. Sir, thank you very much. Uh, it has been so kind of you that you agreed to speak uh, on this uh, momentous occasion about uh, celebrating the 100th birthday of uh, Dr. Narayan. Uh, I, I was just reminded uh, of uh, that our first uh, director, on whose name uh, the geologist day is uh, done, and probably it is kind of a geophysics day we are celebrating today. And uh, we have uh, with us several colleagues and uh, Dr. Vaidya Bhaskar Rao, who had been in the helm of affair for quite a long time at CSAR and GRI, also had been the acting director at the uh, very uh, critical times of the transition of NGRI and happened to be also steering the institute, but Dr. Gupta has narrated when CSAR NGRI was celebrating Diamond Jubilee, and he also kindly agreed to physically come and talk about the growth of geophysics and the allied subjects during the Dr. Narayan's time and his personal interactions. So may I request Dr. Vaijya Bhaskar Rao, former acting director, CSAR NGRI, kindly come to here. Yes, and... Thank you very much, Dr. Tiwari. Professor Gupta, uh, several of all our colleagues in this, in this hall today, dignitaries online and family members of Professor Hari Narayan, and in short, all admirers of Professor Hari Narayan. It's indeed a privilege for me to uh, uh, express a few words here. Uh, I have very fond memories of Professor Hari Narayan. <clears throat> Although um, I joined in GRIs as a JRF in 1976, and that was toward the last uh, couple of years of uh, Professor Narayan's first tenure as a director in GRI. But then uh, we all were uh, great admirers uh, of his uh, abilities and of his, uh, of his warmth and the way he conducted this institute and the way the institute uh, was was uh, already at a, a sort of a, uh, a, uh, a very advanced stage of development and growth, and it was very well known, and we were all proud to be students here. Uh, and I had a few uh, few occasions of few short interactions with him, but I would like to mention one uh, momentous interaction that I have had, uh, and which actually. Uh, uh, left lasting memories. This was when, um, this was like in 1978, 1977, when our group at Geochemistry with Dr. Nakui um, was getting a, a project uh, funded by the PL480 grants. And, and we were planning a, a, an international conference and there were a lot of people visiting NGRI for that conference. And we had planned uh, an extensive field workshop. Mm -hmm. So we were preparing for field studies and mapping and so that we can, we can bring in uh, the Cayman geology of Southern India. Uh, uh, we, can, we can present a very good expose of very fascinating rocks there. And we were interacting with many, many people from the survey from the Geological Society. Professor uh, Harish Gupta mentioned Dr. Pichamuttu, Dr. B.P. Radhakrishna, so many others. And uh, we had short interactions with uh, Professor Hari Narayan in that, and and I, I've I've seen uh, the, the kind of care and the kind of support that he has rendered to our group in in doing all that. And then the the kind of bond homie that he had with Professor Radhakrishna, Prichmuth, and all when all these conferences were taking place, and we were admiring uh, and being proud to be in a 
in such an environment here. The second occasion that was when I had a, a brief opportunity to be at Minnesota, University of Minnesota, Minneapolis, with Professor V. Ramamurthy, a great uh, soul by him, himself. And Professor Harinarayan was visiting US and he had come to Minneapolis uh, for a couple of days, I think. And then he was on his way um, then to Hawaii somewhere. That was somewhere around nine, late 1981, I think, somewhere around the mid, middle 1981. And Professor Ramamurthy had told me that, okay, whenever uh, I have other works to do, I'll, you will be taking, uh, giving company to Professor Harinarayan. So it so happened that for a couple of hours, uh, I was, uh, I had an opportunity to talk to him almost one to one, and then we were sitting in a Professor Ramamurthy's office, and then then he asked me what are your plans and what do you want to do and how. So I I was talking to him about geochronology as a, as a, as a a big uh, activity that should come up to NGRI and how we can. Uh, he asked me very probing questions, and of course by then there was a small geochronology lab here with Dr. Bakshi. Dr. A.K. Bakshi, but then Dr. Bakshi was to be leaving uh, very soon, uh, and his potassium argon, argon, argon uh, laboratory has come up. But the, the, the big dream of doing an argon, argon effort was not materializing because there were no irradiation facilities in the country. Then what alternatives? And we talked about other other uh, geochronometers and how we can do that. And he asked several questions. Like within a half an hour, he was asking me. Few questions, and I was trying to explain him uh, the way whatever I had uh, at that stage as a very young researcher in that area. And I what what I what I noted was he was such a great listener, and uh, I think uh, that probably has probably it has contributed in some way uh, in his mind to firm up uh, and. Um, the, to organize geochronology in, at NGRI, and now we see that it is it is one of the important activities that we pursued. Uh, um, that's so. Um, from on many occasions, uh, I had over the last 20, 30 years, uh, we, we look at uh, the world and we look at we, we we discuss among ourselves the kind of leadership, where, you know, you know what kind of what makes a great leader. And what are the mantras for leadership? We we have seen there you know, on the YouTube, we see hundreds of hundreds of lectures on that. So it's it's a very fascinating topic, and we are in, the, yeah. in that. But then there is what is called a, a simple one or two formulae, one or two uh, points that that all the whole debate on leadership boils down to, and that is very simple. The, the simplest thing, the one point about leadership is that leadership. A leader should realize that leadership is not about himself, but it's about others. Once he realizes that, uh, the whole thing when he's he's going to he's going to take uh, his leadership to an entirely different level. There will be situations when it's all about the leader himself. That's when a leader has to set an example and lead. So these are the two 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 points on leadership that is classically. Uh, define leadership, and uh, and you see that during 1968 to uh, I think uh, 1983 or so, when he was he shaped this institute and he developed it. There's so many, so many different facets of earth science um, that were nurtured here. They were initiated actually and nurtured. And uh, of course, uh, my Previous speakers talked about so many aspects of geophysics, so many nuances of geophysics that were supported and nurtured by Professor Hari Narayan, and you see the results. You see that all kinds of subjects, allied subjects like basic geology, geochemistry, geochronology, paleomagnetism, and, and mineral chemistry, mineral physics, all kinds of subjects that were in the realm of geology and Professor Narayan's vision, it was it's his vision that we have all this entire gamut of our sciences um, supported under one roof here in this institute. And this is the, and 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 how, how could he do that? We understand that when you set up a small lab and a small activity and all the circles that goes with it, all the tribulations that you go through that, 
it's not easy. And how can a person do such a stupendous task of organizing numerous such a vast gamut of subjects and topics and specializations and bring in people and manage uh, this entire research activity, it's, it's really stupendous. And it goes, I think some people are born, just sent, got sent to be able to do that. And <clears throat> definitely Professor Harinarayan was God sent to build an institute here. And uh, I have no, uh, I've, I've, so I have such great admiration for people like that. And, uh, and then there's the second art, the second one, the second thing about Professor I've already mentioned by the previous work is he was such a great listener. I think these two great qualities, uh, they underline, they underpin the, uh, the all great leaders. And I'm happy to be uh, here and I'm in, I'm in and praying appreciation and tribute to Professor Renarayan on the centenary year of Professor Renarayan. And I congratulate and thank uh, Dr. Tiwari for organizing this. And, and uh, thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. And hope we continue this legacy uh, and take it forward uh, in the, into the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Pajya Bhaskar Rao Naru, for being physically present even this during this pandemic time. Another uh, very senior colleague of ours who had a very uh, different uh, kind of feelings about Dr. Narayan and uh, in a very different subject, which was very dear to Dr. Narayan, uh, was um, groundwater. And uh, Dr. Sakil Ahmad, the, our very senior colleagues, and presently the uh, emeritus scientist at CSAR and GRI is with us today. And I request him to kindly uh, present his tributes and his impression about the late legendaries. Shubhita, Dr. Tiwari, and many colleagues <coughs> who are online also. I'm very happy, first of all, that I'm given this opportunity to speak to about a person, great person, a great personality, in fact. And, but one thing when I was informed yesterday about talk on this occasion, I had a very hard time because I was thinking that what should I, what words should I use because and I told you that he's a unique personality and forget about comparative words, the superlative words also is much, much less for him. So that's how I think uh, had it of time, but of course, uh, all you have spoken, uh, so many things have already spoken about him as a great scientist, a great personality, human being. But I'd like to, in a small time, actually, I'd like to tell a few things which others have not spoken. And he was a great administrator, actually. And I'll prove that because I, I came in, in his touch, I mean, or known to him when I was a student at VHU. And it was the first time VHU was passing through. There was a big turmoil after the emergency in 1977. There were no but no one in India was accepting the vice chancellorship of VHU. Several, I mean, I'm not going to give the name, but the several lieutenants were appointed and they resigned without, before even joining VHU. And we were, the, we were ready to even put our student vice chancellor, student talker and all that. So you can imagine that time. And then Dr. Ryan joined in VHU. I mean, we were very much surprised that as a scientist, what is this scientist going to do with the VHU? Is such a big problem as to be solved. But then, his administration was such a good thing. He chose him to join in July 1978. Then the university was already declared closed and the students were removed from the way. So this was his reason that he cannot, I mean, nobody can face the students and teachers and all that at one time that to in that situation. So it was his reason that he, and he controlled everything. I'm sure Manjiri is listening and she used to tell me many more things about that. I, I was, of course, a student, but then we, he joined and he, he controlled everything very nicely. 
and three years we passed without any uh, problem that we uh, had there. Even my own experience, and he allowed the students to meet him. It was not possible there by the right answer. Nobody could meet him. Fix a time in the afternoon, four o'clock, every day or three every day. I myself met him. Put a lot of list of the demands that he says. All the demands are very good. Yes, why it should be to be accepted. Okay, give it to me. Come after meet after one or two weeks. We did that. We were very happy coming out. Lots of great white I have never seen that. And then we went up two weeks. Again, we met. Uh, nothing, nothing had happened really because there was a demand was not easy to accept everything. But he, you see his capability. He says, well, I have passed on to registrar. Let me check whether he is. But you know, that time the student, I mean, this much time was not possible to meet and sit with the vice chancellor. Then, so we came back and we say, well, I think vice chancellor is so good that the registrar fellow is not doing it. <laughs> so this was his capability of administrating it, you see. And then, of course, uh, you know that how, how he built up in GRI. Now, I think you know, everybody can agree with that in GRI and Dr. Harinayan is Silani. And anybody, uh, uh, all these things are so many proofs up here. I had some a uh, lot of personal interaction with him, and he was a really great person. When I, mean, I could never feel I was such a small person for him, and he, I just was appointed when he was a director, but then he left. I got separated, and then but after that, we had a lot of interaction. I used to go to his house, sit with him for a long time, and he had also time that time, too. so we interacted. I never felt that he's such a great person. I'm sitting and side by him and talking, discussing with him. Even, and of course, that was, uh, we were very nervous when he had a cardiac case and whole night we sat with him. Of course, he was unconscious and then pacemaker uh, was put to him and he was so scared that things. <laughs> but it, that too, such a situation and that's way a person, great person. So all these. <clears throat> very good memories are there with, with, with us and with all of us here at NGI still. And I'm sure it will go a long way. And uh, very difficult to compare with it. difficult to have a person like that again. And uh, most of us, you know, one thing which, of course, I'd like to uh, show request and present here uh, is my personal request also that sometimes we, the new persons now coming in NGI and then I heard a couple of times they asked, who are the Tahrirahans? So my request will be to all of us and even myself that we should do something much more than that so that this question should not be asked. Because we feel very, very, very pinched that if any new person, of course, that is quite obvious that a person comes after 10 years, 10, 15 years, now the 50, he has the right to ask. But we should make such a way that he should not ask also. The Tahrirahans should be always visible to Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmad, uh, again, for agreeing our request. Recently, I was uh, traveling, and um, I happened to uh, see a trailer of a movie. And uh, the movie name is uh, Panga, in which uh, the actor says to his son about the actress that don't uh, debate or talk with the your mother about three things, and that is yourself, myself, and kabaddi. The message is that what is very dear to you is as dear to the profession of that individual. And this message I have learned a few years back when I happened to meet one of the alumnus of CSAR and GRI and the daughter of the great Dr. Hari Narayan, Dr. Manjri Bhatnagar. And she told me that we used to envy with NGRI because the, we found that our father had as love and affection as we with us as with NGRI. And she has kindly agreed to join us though online. And 
would narrate her both the experiences of as an alumnus of CSAR NGRI and as a daughter of a person who had much more time giving for the other thing than the family. And that is that other thing is nothing but the Institute, CSAR National Geophysical Research Institute. And may I request Dr. Manjari Bhatnagar to give her a few words, a tribute to our the very distinguished director of CSAR NGRI, Dr. Hari Narayan. Manjari, it's over. Yeah. Uh... Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tiwari, for your uh, words. Am I audible? Is it? Uh... Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, thank you so much, um, Dr. Tiwari, Dr. H.K. Gupta, Dr. Arun Singh. He has guided me uh, in my research. And uh, my friends, uh, Shakil, he is with, uh, we work together, and Kirti, colleagues. So. Um, and all the esteemed speakers and guests. It was uh, really heartening to hear uh, your experiences uh, with my father. You all have spent much more time with him than he did with his family, with us. So he was more of, uh, I think, the NGRI and the uh, person. I feel um, so proud that my father has left us with such a legacy not only by way of contribution to earth sciences, but also by way of showing us a path in making a difference in life of others. So I very clearly remember my, uh, uh, I very clearly remember like him telling my mother that uh, we have three children as he was always considered NGRI as his baby. And thus we had a huge, lovely, big family I have fond memories where we celebrated different festivals, did programs, enjoyed each other's company, and literally had an open house concept where each one was welcomed with open arms. He definitely, as all of you mentioned, was a visionary. My take away from his work, the way of working, and I'll uh, mention a few things. Uh, Given your best, do not bother about the results. That is what he used to always say. And think before you speak. Yes, I'm talking of the think board with the Dr. Um, Gupta also mentioned. So he was very on. He had this think board. And he always said that you think before uh, what you're going to speak. Then have confidence in what you do. And he had a small toy dog on his table. Uh, the dog had, uh, the head was up and, uh, you know, straight stride, which reminded him to be uh, confident at all times. The other thing was respect all. So he, he did that. And the values are very important and reflects a person's character. Then do to others what you want others to do to you. So I think because of that, there were so many people who helped us out at different times when daddy was not well. And, you know, as uh, Mr. Ahmed was mentioning, uh, that he went and personally stayed when he had a cardiac arrest. And I couldn't come because I, I was expecting my daughter. And anger is meaningless. So I have never seen him angry in my whole life not even heard him raise his voice. So tried using these, but I must confess that it's very difficult to practice and have failed number of times. Wonder how he did all these things so easily. He also believed in a holistic approach and all round personality development with very strong values. I have used this concept and started a foundation 12 years back with blessings from both my parents and in-laws. This was started along uh, with my friend for children with cancer from economically backward section of society. We impart integrated education 
which would help the children to gain confidence to go back mainstream after recovery from cancer. Till now, over 7,500 children have benefited from this uh, program. With these words, I would thank you all for the opportunity given to me to share my thoughts of my father. And thank you so much for this. Thank you, Manjri, for reminding us the, the important thing which driven the great uh, person, Dr. Narayan, his whole life. We uh, are today very delighted and happy that Angsan is being watched internationally. And one of the admirers, uh, I just list, see his message on mobile, Professor R.P. Singh from US, listening the entire thing and sent me the message what Dr. Narayan wrote sometime during the 90s and Professor R.P. Singh's comment, how the science and technology is important for the rural development and funding for that. So apart from not only uh, developing the geophysics, he always kept his eyes open for the progress of the country, for the betterment of the country. The whole day may be very uh, less to talk about his contribution in science, his contribution in society, but we have to close this with our thanks to the all dignitaries and distinguished people, those who have joined us, either listening these views of the individuals and narration by Professor Gupta regarding Professor Narayan's journey setting up of the institute and different programs in the institute by other colleagues, uh, Dr. Vijay Bhaskar Rao, Dr. Sakil Ahmad, and Professor R.N. Singh. So with this, uh, we would like to give our small token of appreciation to our distinguished speaker and the people, those who are physically present with us. So, Dr. Kirti Sivastu, can we start? Sir, we would like to, uh, through you, uh, we would be again sending tribute to Dr. Narayan. <coughs> Put up thanks by Dr. Kirti Sivastu, Senior Most Thank you very much, Dr. Gupta, to take us into the journey of Dr. Narayan. And really, he's having the fire within him. That's why he could make this NGRI his, as Dr. Manjavi said, another baby of his. I would like to tell you all something. In 2010, one day he called me to his room and he said, Kitty, I want to give you some books. I said, what books, uncle? He gave me FNA books, okay? So I said, what am I going to do with this? He said, no, you will use it someday. And really, I have taken all those books and I have them in the lobby here, just outside the e-classroom, where a visitor can just sit and browse through some of those books. He also gave me empowering women, books on that. And he said, a woman should always be empowered. That was his vision for a woman also from those days onwards. And as Dr. Manjuri and everybody else has said, he really thought this was his baby and 
whether it was a gardener in the institute whether it was a sweeper everybody always had a smile and in the end he always said one sentence very good very good so it is really very good that we could celebrate today his 100th birthday so thank you all for coming and joining today and uh, we will have a cup of tea though it's late something for you all thank you very much and thank you dr gupta uh, for giving such a wonderful talk and thank you dr bhaskar dr shakil dr sri nagesh dr manjiri dr pankaj all of you all have joined in dr rn singh all of you all thank you very much at the last moment we could do this offline uh, online but next time i'm sure we'll have an online uh, offline function for dr narayan someday thank you so much